Greetings and welcome back to room 303 in our Talks with Walt as we are calling our readings through the deathbed edition of Walt Whitman's Leaves of Grass. We now turn to Yonandino, the poem number 32 of the 58 of Sands at 70. This one is going to be for us really a sad poem. It is. It's going to be one more time Whitman's interest in Native American culture and, and, and Native names. You'll remember, of course, Long Island as Pominock, New York City as Manhattan. He said in a uh, comment to his pal Horace Trouble that um, he was sure of the correctness of his translation of Yonadio as being lament. And he said there never was yet an Indian name that did not mean so much than more and more and more, end quote. Now, our assumptions are that you've been following our stuff at LearnStrong.net, down that left-hand side, talks with all our playlists, and that from the very beginning, when we have been paying attention to Whitman's interesting dance with all things Native American, sometimes celebratory, sometimes maybe uh, borderline racist. We've commented on this. Our hope is that you've been with us. And of course, a set of introductory comments uh, to Sands at 70. And then we just finished with continuities. Now, our Nortons will uh, tell us that, uh, first of all, there's a, there's a note that Whitman will provide. The sense of the word is lament for the Aborigines, he says. It's an Iroquois term and has been used for a personal name. Now this poem was first published in The Critic, November 26, 1887. The poem is one of the many memorials of Whitman's interest in American names, no doubt. And I think the key word here is the word lament as we uh, go to work with it. Now four times um, Yonanondio uh, uh, is, is used in this poem. It's the only time in Leaves of Grass where it is used. I'll say it this way. A song a poem of itself, the word itself, a dirge. You'll remember dirge from Song of the Exposition 3. Amid the wilds, the rocks, the storm, and wintry night, notice the four, of related to nature, right? To me, such misty, strange tableau, the syllables calling up. It's almost like a trip back in time. Yonanondio, I see far in the west or north, a limitless ravine with plains and mountains dark. I see swarms of stalwart chieftains, medicine men, and warriors. You'll remember in Navasink the poem had I the choice, the use of the word warriors. As flitting by like clouds of ghosts, this is again going to break our hearts to read this language, they pass and are gone in the twilight, the native, the native peoples. And then in parenthetics, race of the woods, the landscapes free and the falls, no picture, poem, statement, passing them to the future, end quote. But notice the colon is inside of the uh, parenthetics. And then twice, back to back, Yonanondio, Yonanondio, unlimed, they disappear. Today gives place and fades. The city's farms, factories, fade. A muffled, sonorous sound. A wailing word is borne through the air for a moment, then blank and gone and still and utterly lost. Now again, there are a few poems where it seems to me Whitman is at his most passionate and saddest in his translation of the loss, the tremendous loss of, of, of amazing cultures. And of course, we have commented on this already in our study of Leaves of Grass, the way in which so much of native culture is, is lost by the time that Whitman is writing these poems. And in a poem like this, he sees it, the lamentation of what is lost. Notice he'll call it a dirge. And then he says he can see far in the west or north this limitless ravine with plains and mountains and dark. And then he says he sees the swarms of stalwart chieftains, but they're all, they're all passing away. They're flitting by like clouds of, uh, of ghosts. They pass and they're gone in the twilight. The last two lines, of course, of the poem is utterly gone. And he'll say it, nothing is left of them. Yononondio, uh, the lamentation, they disappear. And then he's back to this moment. Today, gives place and fades, and then what is replaced, the cities, the farms, the factories, and somehow all of that fades, 
a muffled sonorous sound, a wailing word. I think the key here, if it isn't the word lament, it is the word wailing, is born through the air and then blank and then gone and then still and then utterly lost. Well, at 2A, obviously, it's tragic if we forget and lose the native cultures, no question. At 2B, I love this perspective, though, that he has, traveling back in time and then forward and then to the future. At 3A, well, Tilly Olson's novel, uh, Yonanandio, of 1974, is one that we can recommend to you that is a compelling extension beyond this one. At 3B, finally, what are your thoughts about the loss of native culture and how mournfully sad that it is? And what is, uh, you, do you think, Whitman teaching you about the power of names and the power of native cultures? I hope. Your study of leaves of grass here is challenging you. Thank you.